Do you have any questions? Yes. Would it make sense to pray to God and the saints for Marasants and Paramsants at work in the world, say at least one for each major region, Mexico, uh, one, North America, two, Mexico, Central and South America, three, Africa, four, Europe, five, former Soviet Union, six, somewhere else, seven, middle, eight, far east, where Sants and Paramsants at work in these regions visit each other's places and demonstrate unity and solidarity. Looks like a long question. <laughs> I'll read it again. Would it make sense to pray to God and the saints for more saints and Paramsans at work in the world, say at least one for each major region, North America, these are the regions, North America, Mexico, Central, South America, Africa, Europe, former Soviet Union, Middle East, Far East, Near East, where sons and Paramsans at work in these areas visit each other places and demonstrate unity and solidarity. Saints come where there are seekers. If there are no seekers, they don't come. So the saints don't come just by region. They come by where seekers are. And the level of the achievement, the level of realization each saint has is according to the level of the seeking that the seekers have. That is why saints' appearance in this world is a response to our seeking. If there are no seekers, they don't have to come. If we are, if we are busy enjoying our world, we say this is it, that we are all happy. Why do we need saints? So that is why saints don't divide themselves regionally. And if we pray, we can pray for people. That is good to pray to help other people. It's a good idea to pray to God, to help other people. But if the other people are not needing your help, your prayer has no value. It depends on the individual. An individual must seek. And the seeking will determine what saint will come. If they are perfect saints, then they know where the seekers are. They appear automatically through circumstances, through coincidences. They appear wherever, wherever there are seekers. They do not come to reform the world. They do not come to change things. They just come to take the seekers back to where they're seeking to go back. Those who are wanting to go to their true home, perfect living masters will appear in their life and take them to their true home. If we are ready for it, this idea of being ready for our spiritual journey is very important because very often we think we are ready and when the time comes we are not ready. We find that we have so many attachments here. We have so many things which we take to be more real than even the saintly path. We think saintly path is something that is occurring within this reality. This is real. Now within this we have to find something saintly. When we are in that state then only those saints will come who can help us with this reality in this world. So that is why the level of saints and paramsans are so many that they come according to the seeking and not by region. Of course, I would like to join with this questioner and say, I would like to pray that we all go back to our true home. It will be wonderful. But the seeking, if it is not there, our prayers will not work. Two very similar questions I'll ask both at the same time. Due to life and family's obligations, a disciple is pulled away from you and it really pains the disciple. What should be done in this situation? And when a disciple has a great desire to be with the master physically but cannot due to life's circumstances, what happens? When a disciple has a great desire 
to be with the master physically but cannot due to life's circumstances what happens to quench their thirst at that time when the desire is great to be physically the desire does not remain only physical it remains also internal and when the internal desire is strong like when we love somebody even if we are not present physically with the beloved we think of the beloved all the time the beloved picture is in our mind all the time and that is when the radiant form of the master appears and it makes up for more than the missing physical presence and the radiant form of the master which comes in meditation and in memory and in remembrance that becomes a good one to quench one's thirst due to life's and family's obligations a disciple is pulled away from you and it really pains the disciple what should be done in this situation yes we all have our life in which we have obligations in this world to our family to our jobs and life destiny has been created like this that we all have obligations and all we have things to do here so it should not be treated as a pull away from the master we should remember the master even when fulfilling our duties in this world we should think the master is with us while we are doing those things if we remember the master even when we are doing worldly things it appears master remains with us and we are not pulled away from it the true life of a disciple should be one where he remembers master at every time whether he is doing something worldly or non worldly spirituality is not something separate from life the whole life should be spiritual by constantly remembering the master and knowing that the master's relationship with us is such that he is present with us and is doing everything for us and when things happen which are reminding you of master then it becomes easy to know that master is there with you all the time not necessarily when you are in meditation or thinking about him so every action that you do whether it's an obligation in this world or it's in meditation master is with you and remember that and you will feel the master is with you is the love and devotion that takes one beyond the mind a noun or a verb is it an action is the love and devotion that takes one beyond the mind a noun or a verb or an action it's all it can be love is a noun to love also a verb and loving action so love and devotion is expressed in every way it's all three it is an action it is a it's a feeling it's a noun and it's a verb which leads to action what happens to those initiated by you through you once they pass away what happened to those initiated by you through you once they pass away once one is initiated by a perfect living master that power of the perfect living master is with that person forever not for a short while not for this life once a person is accepted by a perfect living master the master is with that person forever no matter what form he is in or even if there is no form the master never leaves that is why initiation is a permanent arrangement it's not temporary for this life and when a person passes away the master appears at the time of death at the time of death the master who has initiated you appears and he will say i'll take you where you want not following the laws of rebirth the normal laws of rebirth if you have to be reborn the master decides with you where you will be born so it will be a better life and you will be able to complete the job that you have left incomplete in this life next life but master never leaves you he is always with you even after you die i have been told that one can quiet their mind through meditation and experience love and oneness after quieting the mind is this your opinion 
I have been told that one can quiet the mind through meditation and experience love and oneness after quieting the mind. Is this your opinion? Yes, it is my opinion. <laughs> that was the simplest answer I could give. Did you meet Neem Karoli Baba, the guru of Richard Alpert? What was the nature of your meeting? Who was he? Did you meet Neem Karoli Baba, the guru of Richard Alpert? What was the nature of your meeting? Who was he? I met Neem Karoli Baba before Richard Alpert met him. And I met him a couple of times. And he was a very enlightened sage and a very important saint. And I spent some good time with him. Richard Alpert went later on and met him and spent time and became Baba Ram Das. This is the last question. When the feeling of love for the master or a loved one leaves the disciple, what is required for it to return? When the feeling of love for the master leaves the disciple, what is required for it to return? It depends on how far the feeling has gone away. If the feeling has just disappeared for a little while, it comes back with an event that happens and brings the master. Sometimes the feeling returns when something happens which you don't like. The master can give you a little snap on the face. You say, oh, oh God, now I remember you. People remember God a lot when something unpleasant happens in their life. And sometimes masters do introduce some events in our life which are not so palatable. We then remember master, master, now I remember you. So there are many ways of the feeling uh, for the master coming back. Thank you very much for listening attentively to these questions and answers. I hope to see you next month. And there are some people who had asked for personal one-on-one -on -one meeting. I'll see them now. And keep your focus on the spiritual path. Keep your focus on what is most important in a human life. You may not know it, but the fact is that this reincarnation that is taking place from one life to another, just because we can't remember our past lives, we sometimes think it doesn't happen. But when you go to the higher levels of awareness, you will find it has been happening all the time. And not only have we been continuously being in a human form, we have taken the form of life which we see in plants and trees and in insects and birds and animals. We have been through all that. And the cycle is such that when we go back from here, we start from almost like Darwinian evolution. And we go to the tree life, the, the plant life first, and then we move to insect life, then we move to snakes and rodents and all that, then we move on to birds and animals, mammals, and then come back to human life. Sometimes a very long cycle. Human life is a very big gift given to us. And human life is the one where we can seek. There's no other life to seek. So that is why let's take full advantage of the possibility we have here, not postpone it. Sometimes we say we have more important things to do in life and we put off our search for the truth and the time comes when we die and there was no time. Then we regret. Then the cycle starts of reincarnation. Fortunately, those who have been accepted by a perfect living master do not go below a human life. If they have to come back to complete what they could not do now, they come back as a human being. But I still would like to say let us, know, not, uh, let us not lose this opportunity of being seekers in a human life. Do whatever we can so that we take advantage of this opportunity given to us. Thank you very much for listening to me. For those who waved to me and those who did not. <laughs>